All right, and uh, we've come to that time that we analyze the biggest stars and the biz chart. And starting us off is Midas Fuel. The palm prices for fuel in Kenya have, have reached actually a historic high after the government discontinued the fuel subsidy program that had offered relief to motorists over the last one year. In Nairobi, a litre of petrol has been retailing at 179 shillings and 30 cents, while a litre of diesel for 165 shillings. A litre of kerosene has been also selling at 147 shillings and 94 cents uh, for the last one month. And the question is, in today's review by EPRA, Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, will, I should, what should we be expecting generally? And I uh, can... Uh, interesting times. Energy is at the core of everything. Uh, for today's review, what are your expectations? Well, you're absolutely right, Noah. It's the 14th of the month. 14th of the month has become a time when Kenyans become nervous about what will happen to fuel costs, uh, except February 14th, for good reason. Yes. So today we expect to see, uh, we've seen global oil prices coming down. Uh, but we saw the OPEC countries are reducing their supply. So the question is, will, those, will that drop that we saw uh, the last few weeks uh, filter into the market? Or will it not, because it takes time to filter into the market. So I think it's uh, one of those things that will be a bit 50-50 until we say what, what, will, what will happen here. Yeah. Definitely. And mm -hmm. the question of subsidy, we understand the government is not very pro-subsidy. In fact, the last review, we saw an item totally, you know, uh, getting rid of the subsidy on one of the products, uh, two they maintained. Uh, subsequently, especially with, with the prices now being expected to sort of remain same, uh, should we see the government pull down and pull out uh, subsidies as, as, as we continue? Well, the argument that they had made was the subsidy program was way too expensive, that it will deplete the government of its cash, cash that could be used in other parts of the economy. But I think at that time, the expectation was that global fuel prices will come down, that even the removal of a subsidy will not be felt as much. But now, as I said, with the OPEC countries reducing supply and uh, putting a floor mm -hmm. on those global oil prices, mm -hmm. uh, it might be quite tough uh, for many Kenyans in terms of transport, in terms of food, and all the other things that fuel prices um, affect. Definitely. And talking about inflation, r right now, uh, have, we, have we hit 9%? 9.2. 9.2%, right, right. which is quite high, driven by food and fuel, definitely. Um, looking at that, and even we saw uh, KNBS release their quarter two, uh, you know, economic performance, the slowdown that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. Globally, looking at it economically, what should we expect? Uh, are we going into a recession? Are we into one <laughs> already? And uh, what are the elements that signify uh, such times? Well, this week we had the IMF World Bank meetings and that crucial IMF report that talked about a looming recession in about 30% uh, of the world. Um, so it might affect. I think for parts of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, it would be more of an economic slowdown uh, than a recession. Uh, but still, we saw some key sectors, uh, particularly in that Bureau of Statistics report, sectors such as ICT be affected. So globally, there is that expectation that there will be a slower economy on the back of just high commodity prices, uh, still drought, uh, that we've not seen the end of it. And uh, I think it will be up to what uh, the central banks uh, can do because right now they're raising interest rates. So the costs of borrowing are also going up. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's quite a tough time either for, uh, for, for most countries in terms of navigating, particularly also when you have that huge debt burden yeah. uh, that is still sort of like um, hovering above us. I know, and mm. we've discussed this before, the, mm. uh, the choice of leadership and the mm. cabinet secretary for treasury, mm. Professor Njugunandungu. Mm. Um, vetting uh, is beginning next week. Mm. Uh, I believe it's coming on Tuesday, mm. if I'm not wrong. Um, looking at what to expect with all these factors at play mm. and also as understanding uh, his history,
Mm. What what do you anticipate uh, that this uh, appointments committee um, in Parliament should be very keen when 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 questioning and interrogating uh, the cabinet secretary in coming hopefully for treasury? Well, I'm sure the committee will be aware of his credentials, his background at the central bank. And I think the one big asset that will help Professor is the fact that he understands monetary policy and now he's coming into fiscal policy. Because right now the most important thing globally is the alignment of monetary policy and fiscal policy. That's what's happening. We saw that in the States with the Janet Yellen moving from the Fed Reserve to the Treasury. So it's a big thing and countries that don't coordinate monetary and fiscal policy such as the UK right now mm. where really the Bank of England and uh, the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer are moving in different directions mm. they risk putting their countries into crisis so I think for the good professor the fact that he has that background he knows inflation is a big challenge and he'll need to give time to the central bank to manage inflation then once you get back to 5% then now Treasury can come in and sort of start doing um, some of the fiscal deficit management but trying to do things at the same time um, I think he'll be aware of the risks of that. Definitely <coughs> very important and we're looking forward to you know that that vetting Kenyans are waiting next week it's going to be interesting yeah mm -hmm. um, and talking about uh, performance because we have to assess so far uh, President William Ruto has been in power now in counting it's 32 days but Let's give him a month. Being in power for a month, the moves that is make is made rather. Have they been making sense? Well, we did an analysis, what we call the thirty day report card. Let's listen in. Come forward together with the President William Ruto and Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa took charge of government at Kasarani Stadium during a colorful ceremony attended by more than a dozen foreign heads of state. With the dust now settled and eyes squarely on President Ruto and his number two Rigathi Gashagwa to see how they have hit the ground running, the duo has seemingly cut the figure of men on a mission from day one. In just under 30 days, they have initiated sweeping reforms in various sectors including agriculture, finance, judiciary and the executive. In the agriculture sector, the lifting of the ban on genetically modified crops, commonly referred to as GMOs, in a bid to enhance food security and lower the cost of food, is perhaps President Ruto's biggest and most controversial reform in the sector just yet. And to also lower the cost of farm inputs and consequently the cost of food. President Ruto has also lowered the cost of fertilizer with a 50 kg bag that used to go for 6,500 shillings, now retailing at 3,500 shillings. As a government, we are focused on increasing agricultural productivity that will lead to increased supply and eventually lower food prices due to the forces of supply and demand. In the executive, President Ruto has already named his cabinet nominees who will be crucial in the implementation of his campaign promises. It is also important that we set up the new cabinet early so that we can quickly uh, take charge of uh, the affairs of our country and begin the process of implementing the plan he is, however, forced to wait for Parliament in the coming weeks to give the nominees a clean bill of health before they can hit the ground running, a process that could, however, run into headwinds. What are you asking our parliamentarians to do? Honestly, to go into the committees, compromise them with money here and money here, and actually approve people with criminal cases. In the police service, the head of state has also nominated Jafet Kome to take over as police inspector general and replace Hilary Mutiambai, who has since proceeded on terminal leave for health reasons. President Ruto has further declared the DCI boss seat vacant after immediate former boss George Kenoti resigned for specified reasons. The search for Kenoti's successor is already underway. At the same time, in the judiciary, 
President Ruto has since moved to solve the stalemate over the appointment of some six judges to the Court of Appeal, as well as the Lands and Environment Court. The six were all sworn into office just a day after the Kasarani inauguration to extend their stay at the judiciary, which was also recently promised an additional 3 billion shillings to its annual budget by the head of state. In the finance sector, President Ruto ordered the Treasury to pluck out 300 billion shillings from this year's budget, citing the need to tame government borrowing. We are overtaxing trade and undertaxing wealth. We will be proposing tax measures. Although Ruto and Gashagu appear to have made some considerable steps, opinion out there is divided over their performance. Some Kenyans feel that the cost of living is still high owing to the prices of key basic commodities such as maize flour. I'm not very pleased. I see a lot of PR and it's, uh, I feel like PR and politics and campaigns still going on. I must say that is on the right track. And for that th just 30 days, his achievement must be beyond people's expectation. Let's give them time. Because with every government and with every transition, there is definitely going to be that grace period that you need to award someone. They are on the verge of launching the Hasla fund that they had spoken about. So I think those are, those are so far so good. Those are things that they are looking into. You have to give it time for it to work. No, no, no. That's why we have as the curtains fall on the William Bruto administration's first month in office, ushering in the second, the jury is still out on what kind of a president William Bruto will turn out to be. Only time will tell. David Mudoka, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, David Mudoka, thank you. Ken, only time will tell. But when we quantify that so far for the past 32 days. What has time told you if you're a good reader of time? I think it's <coughs> still way too early mm -hmm. to be able to issue a scorecard. I think we need another two more months. Mm -hmm. um, even in your normal job, you need at least one quarter before your boss can assess uh, your performance. Uh, I think it's been a busy period. We've seen a lot of activity with the SGR directive, the subsidy directives, and it will take time before we can be able to say whether this was a good policy or a bad policy. I think the significant uh, cut budget cuts, the 300 billion shilling cut on the budget, um, at the same time when the CBK raised interest rates, might create a bit of a tight squeeze in terms of uh, liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I say, it's still too early to be able to make um, very concrete predictions. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, just this week, uh, the president mm. um actually the issue of privatization comes in very handy and um right now um uh, we understand today's war uh, kdf day so the president is speaking let's let's listen in 